grouping of data and pie charts. In this module, you will learn about grouping of data, histogram, and pie charts. In the previous class, we have learned about what is data, data collection, organizing smaller data using tally marks, and interpreting data using pictograph, the bar graph, and the double bar graph. Now let us learn some terms relating to organizing the data using tally marks. A data is available in an unorganized form, is called as raw data. Now to get meaningful inferences, we need to organize it systematically. Suppose a group of students were asked about their hobbies and following were the result. Now tabulating it in a tally marks, we get here the number of tallies before each hobby gives the number of students who like that particular hobby is called as frequency of that hobby. Frequency gives the number of times that a particular entry occurs. The frequency of students whose hobby is dancing is 6. The table made is known as frequency distribution table as it gives the number of times an entry occurs. We saw that data of hobbies showed the occurrence of each of the entries several times. Example, reading was the hobby of five students. This type of hobby can be represented by using pictograph and bar graph. But what if we have larger data? Like example, suppose a company decides to gift their employees different types of car on the basis of their salary. For this, the company collects the data about annual income of the 100 employees whose salary was above 50,000 yearly. The data collected was in rupees 65,000, 70,000, 1 lakh, 55,000, 90,000, 50,000 and so on. As it was a large data ranging from 50,000 to 1 lakh, so even if we make a frequency distribution for each observation, it would be a large table. So instead of tabulating each, the data can be classified into small groups like 50,000 to 60,000, 60,000 to 70,000 and so on till 90,000 to 1 lakh. Now let's tabulate and obtain a frequency distribution of the number of observations falling in each group. Thus, we get the frequency distribution table as follows. Data presented in this manner is said to be grouped and the distribution obtained is called as grouped frequency distribution. Here each small groups divided is called as class intervals or intervals. We can observe here that 60,000 is occurring in both the classes, 50,000 to 60,000 and 60,000 to 70,000. Similarly, 70,000, 80,000 and 90,000 are repeating, but we cannot mark a single entry in twice. Therefore, to avoid the confusion, we can mark a tally for the common observation to the higher class. That is, for 60,000 mark a tally in the group 60,000 to 70,000 and not 50,000 to 60,000. For class intervals, the 50,000 to 60,000, 50,000 is called the lower class limit and 60,000 is called the upper class limit. Similarly, for every group, the first observation is its lower class limit while the last is its upper class limit. And the difference between the lower class limit and upper class limit is called the width or size of the class intervals. Now let us learn how to construct graphs for grouped frequency distribution. 
On the basis of this grouped frequency distribution of annual income of the 100 employees, let's construct a bar graph in a different way. First, place the class intervals on the horizontal axis and frequency on the vertical axis using a suitable scale. Now make the bars for the particular class intervals as per their frequency. We can see that here there is no gap between the bars as there is no gap between the class intervals and the height of the bars is showing the frequency of the class interval. This type of graphical representation of data is called as histogram. That is, an histogram is a graphical frequency distribution in which rectangles with bases on the horizontal axis are given widths equal to the class intervals and heights equal to the corresponding frequencies. Here we can show a jagged line or broken line along the horizontal line to indicate that we are not showing the numbers from 0 to 50,000. Histogram can be helpful to infer data such as, for this example, the company can get a quick observation that which type of car and number of cars is to be bought for employees with the annual income categories divided and their frequency just by looking at the graph. Have you ever seen such graphs in which data is presented in circle? These types of graphs are called pie charts or circle graphs. A pie chart shows the relationship between a whole and its parts. Here, the whole circle is divided into sectors. The size of each sector is proportional to the activity or information it represents. For example, in this pie chart, the proportion of the sector for favorite dish as burger is equal to the total number of children divided by number of children with favorite dish as burger is equal to 20 by 60, equal to 1 upon 3 or one third. So we can infer that out of all students, one third like burger as their favorite dish. Similarly, we can find for others too. If we add all fractions, we get the total as 1. Now let us see an example how to draw a pie chart for a given data. Suppose we are given a data where a survey was made in school for class 10 to investigate which stream they would like to choose for next class from science, commerce and arts. The following was the result. To show this in pie chart, first we need to calculate the angle for each data to be shown in graph by calculating value in fraction form, then changing it into an angle. Now we know that a complete circle have a central angle as 360 degree. Accordingly, we need to find the angle by making a table. First, calculate the fraction by dividing the percentage by 100. So we get as follows. Now to obtain the angle, multiply the fractions obtained by 360 degrees. So we get as follows. Now draw a circle with any convenient radius. Mark its center O and a radius OA. Then the angle of the sector for science stream is 216 degrees. So using the protractor, draw angle AOB equal to 216 degrees. Now from radius OB, draw angle BOC as 108 degrees for comma stream. And finally we get angle AOC equal to 36 degrees for arts. Hence we get our pie chart. Similarly, for any given data, we can draw a pie chart by following the above steps. Let us revise all that we learned in this module on grouping of data, histogram and pie charts.